Hi there, welcome to the garage. I'm here with the uh, BMW Z3 Roadster, and I was hoping this would be a uh, video where I install a hard dog roll bar. Uh, I showed the unboxing in the previous video, and I was hoping that this video I'd be able to put it on the car, but uh, plans have had to change a little bit because my car is unwell. My son is very sick and he needs some help. The Roadster, unfortunately, is not feeling too well because it has a uh, radiator leak. Back in 2019, I did a full coolant system refresh on this BMW Z3's uh, M52TU uh, 2.5 liter engine that not just included a, uh, a new radiator and the new radiator hoses, but also a new thermostat, thermostat housing, an upgraded water pump, and also replacing the coolant hose that sits underneath uh, the intake manifold. Pain in the butt to get to, so if uh, that's in your future, feel free to click on the link in the description with my whole coolant system refresh series. So as part of that refresh, I also took the opportunity to upgrade a few parts for maybe some possible track use or autocross. And so what I did is I put in an upgraded uh, Stewart Racing water pump and also a Mishimoto all aluminum radiator designed for the uh, M52TU and the M54 engines. And unfortunately that's starting to leak now. So after I did that whole coolant system refresh and upgrade, I did a coolant system pressure test, which came back uh, great. It looked like it was a sealed system, but ever since then something has been just a, a little bit off. Whenever I check the coolant levels about every, I don't know, two to three months, the uh, the bobber on the reservoir is always just like a, a little bit low. No sir, I don't like it. And it's just like a little bit of fluid and but still shouldn't do that, right? I mean, the coolant system is supposed to be a closed system. Really the only opening on the coolant system that's supposed to be there for the M52 TU and M54 engines is the coolant cap. That coolant cap serves as kind of like a safety valve. So if you have really high pressures in your coolant system, say your engine is overheating, uh, that cap is supposed to open at two bar of pressure and uh, let out some of that coolant, some of that steam, and uh, reduce the pressure and hopefully save the uh, engine in the process. But I haven't had any overheating issues since I did the coolant system refresh. In fact, I've never had any overheating issues on this car. So it's kind of mystery as to where that fluid was a going because, uh, well, it wasn't showing up in any of the oil analyses and I couldn't spot it with the eye. It's okay, so I decided, oh shit, buddy, I gotta dig a little deeper. But now here we are in spring 2023 and I took the car out uh, just last week uh, for just some errands. And when I came to park it, I smelled that sweet aroma, that sweet, sweet aroma of BMW coolant. And I popped the hood, uh, inspected the engine, and found sure enough that uh, a dribble of coolant was coming off the side of the Mishimoto radiator and onto the floor. We're all trying to find the guy who did this. Now, supposedly this radiator has a lifetime warranty from Mishimoto and I'll be filing a claim for that later. Now to help with that claims process, I'm gonna include some photos of the leak actually happening and I'm gonna go one step further. I'm gonna go ahead and do a UV dye test. I've got this uh, bottle of uh, UV tint or UV dye that goes into the coolant system. This is uh, one ounce of UV dye. It's good for up to eight liters of coolant. This engine has a capacity of 10.5 liters, so it should be enough to cover it. I'm gonna put the UV dye into the coolant system. I'm gonna run the car uh, to give it a chance for the thermostat to open up and the coolant system to flow the UV dye around. And uh, then I'm gonna stop and go ahead and shine a UV light under the engine hood and show you and Mishimoto where this leak is coming from. Funny story about this UV dye. I've had this dye bottle about four years. Um, in February 2019 is when I ordered the Mishimoto uh, radiator for this car. And I looked through my purchase history, my order history, as to when I actually uh, bought this. And it turns out about two months later, um, I bought the bottle of UV dye. So I think even back then, I knew something maybe wasn't quite right with the radiator or the coolant system and went ahead and got this. and. Uh, now I'm gonna use it. Now with all that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and put this bottle of UV dye uh, in the coolant system and uh, top it up a little bit with some uh, distilled water. Fortunately, the leak is, is so tiny, so minuscule, that it only really opens up when the car is warm and the coolant system is pressurized, which is why I haven't been getting any puddle 
uh, collecting beneath the car while it's sitting, it's only after I drive the car back into the garage, uh, park it, turn it off, that it starts to, uh, to leak and collect. And it kind of stops leaking thereafter. So this should be very useful for us. All right, so I'm gonna put the UV dye in the coolant system. All right, here we have our Mishimoto aluminum radiator installed. And I'm gonna show you where I actually found that leak before I go ahead and put the dye in. As you can see, there's only a little bit of coolant on the lid down there. And this lid has been sitting for about, I don't know, five days? Ever since I noticed the uh, coolant dribbling off the side here. And again, this is only happening while the system is hot and pressurized. Now, if I focus here on the end of the radiator, you might actually see where that dribble of coolant comes from. It starts right here close to uh, the hose. It just dribbles all along the side of the radiator down to the uh, drainage plug down there. All right, let's now go up to the cap for the coolant reservoir. You can see there is some residue from coolant over here, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's not the big source of the leak in the system. Go ahead and open it. As you can see, the bobber is a little bit low. This bubble here should be at the rim. You can see it's all the way down there. I am gonna top this up with some uh, distilled water after I put the UV dye in, and then we'll just uh, take her out, get her warm, put her back in, and do another inspection with a UV light and uh, see what's going on here. In you go, down to hatch. Can that be the last injection, please? Nope. Remember to stay hydrated, folks. You know what, do you have um, anything sparkling? Hey, check this out. I've got the, uh, the UV light here. See what that looks like. <laughs> I've got Slimer from Ghostbusters powering my car. I should just be able to turn on the flux capacitor and hit 77 miles per hour. certainly smell coolant. Now let's see if we can actually uh, see coolant. Let's turn on my little light here and wow that is <laughs> that is bright. I don't even need any sort of uh, UV lens to see this through. Look at that. Already collecting at the bottom. I've uh, I think I've found the problem here. Lovely. I'm glad I put some dye in because you can see here too that there's actually some dye coming up through uh, the connection here with the radiator hose up top. Something to look into. Let's go over to the reservoir and cap. I don't see anything here. Looks like the cap is clean. It's just this spot here on the side. Yep. Now look at that. It is actually starting to drip onto the lid now. So there you have it. One leaky radiator diagnosis with uh, the UV dye kit. I mean, I knew it was leaking uh, beforehand and uh, now it's uh, leaking and glowing. I don't know what I expected. It's gonna drain the coolant system and remove uh, this Mishimoto radiator and fill out a claim online. And then I'm actually, I've got a replacement radiator uh, handy, just came in this week from FCP Euro along with a uh, brand new upper radiator hose. So go and install that, uh, fill the system, purge it for air, and hopefully we'll be good to go after that. Well, I sure learned a lot today. I hope you did too. I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you down the road.